I'm going to address the start of this video with a disclaimer that today's vlog is going to be boring and if you like my high energy, lots of creative stuff going on kind of vlogs, this vlog's not going to be for you. See, I've got so much work on at the moment, I'm crazy busy that I'm not leaving the studio all day. So today it's going to be in two parts. The first part is me playing with this new Pico time lapse. I ordered this thing at the start of 2014 and it's just arrived. So I'm going to be having a play with that. And the second part is going to be q and I've posted up on social media to ask me questions and then I'll address those in about two hours time. So yeah, this is the Pico. It just arrived. It's this tiny little attachment and you plug this into your phone. And then on your phone you choose how long you want the duration of your time lapse, the intervals, and you can do cool things like HDR and bracketing and speed ramping. Then you click send. Then on your DSLR you plug in the cable that comes with it, and then you plug the Pico into the attachment. And now it's just going to start taking a time lapse. Every three seconds it's going to take a photo. All by itself. In fact the time lapse you watched the start of me working was filmed right now and then I grabbed it and I put it at the start of the video. Kind of like some sort of inception thing. Oh, I'll put you another time lapse in now, I've been working. Go! Canon 5D Mark 3 to get fixed after it gave up on life. Just broke on me. Luckily it broke now while I was just shooting a time lapse and not like the middle of a wedding. Having said that, I've always had a backup in the car anyway, so it's not like I'm not prepared, but it still sucks when the camera breaks on you. So for the next couple of days, I'm gonna be borrowing my assistant's Canon 6D. My Canon 5D is now on its way to Canon to hopefully get fixed nice and quick, because that thing's like an extension of my arm and I desperately need it back. Could I please grab a black rice power bowl? So testing out that Pico time lapse thing took a turn for the worse. Halfway through, my shutter on my 5D Mark III decided to die. <laughs> The things are rated for 150,000 shots. Last time I sent it away to get cleaned, I got a message back to say, just so you know, your shot account's 230,000. It's kind of near the end of its life. So I've been anticipating it for some time. But just gutted now because I've got to send it away and it's like 700 bucks to get fixed. And I need my camera literally every day. So as I said this morning, I put a post up today on social media asking people to ask me questions. And now I'm going to address them. Question time, question time, question, question, 18 questions. Right, which sister do you love the most? They're all pretty equal. I guess I've loved Brooke for longer because she's the eldest, so if, if you're measuring it in terms of time, my eldest sister I love the most, but to be honest, they're all pretty equal. The one question I've had a couple of times is how I balance work, life, wife, and baby. And that's a really good question and a hard one to answer. So the first thing is just making sure you get as much as possible out of the day. Because so that means going to bed late, waking up early, and trying to minimize being unproductive. And that's where I sometimes really struggle with work-life balance. The problem I have is that I can never switch off my work. I'm so passionate about it and love what I do that I'm always on my emails, I'm always on my laptop. I'm always getting stuff done because I hate being unproductive. But likewise, I love hanging out with my girls and love spending family time. So I found the easiest way to switch off when I'm in life mode is to be really productive in the days leading up to that point because then you don't feel guilty when you're switching off. You would have known from last week, I had about two weeks where I was getting like three hours sleep every night and I got so much stuff done and it felt great. And then come Sunday and Monday, I didn't feel bad about having a couple of days where I chilled out for a little bit. Don't get me wrong, I was still doing a lot of emails and a lot of work on those days, but it wasn't at the same pace as the rest of the time. So as long as there's a difference between normal work and life, then you'll be all good. It's a really hard problem and I know a lot of people deal with how to balance uh, the two. Um, it's, it's not easy, I can tell you that. It's not easy, and especially when you've got a little one, there's even more pressure to spend time with her because they grow up so damn quick and before I know it, she'll be off to school and life is going so fast that sometimes you really need to stop what you're doing and just enjoy the moment as it is now because you can get caught up in the hustle of life way too easy. What advice would you give to someone buying their first camera? Um, the first thing I'd do is if your money can afford it, buy a brand new camera, don't buy a second hand one. You're better off buying a brand new camera that's current now as the features on that will be far better than the features in an entry level camera three or four years ago. I haven't got a particular camera that I would suggest for someone, all my gear is 
Canon. I've always used Canon. I always liken the Canon Nikon rivalry very similar to Ford and Holden. They're both great cars, but for some reason people are really passionate about one or the other. There's no one that really likes both. You're either on one side of the fence, there's no middle ground. Just the way each camera kind of functions is slightly different depending which way you go. But all my gear is Canon. I love Canon stuff. If you're just after like a small point and shoot camera though, I can highly recommend the Canon G7X. This is what I use for all my daily vlogging when I'm not using this camera. It's also what I use all my social media posts. Usually I've always got my iPhone 6 on me, which takes great photos, but the quality on this and the zoom is just so much better. There's a wireless button, you just push it, it goes straight to your phone, nice and easy to upload. My favorite ever aerial shot, um, I'll show that to you now. <laughs> Neither, Vietnamese food. But if I had to choose one, Thai food. This moment is a dad so far. Um, this one's tricky. Literally every day I wake up and see Scarlett, I'm super proud. It would actually probably be yesterday morning. I was changing a nappy and we're trying to get it to count lots. So I said one and then Scarlett said two, three, and four without any prompting. She just said them by herself. What is the meaning of life? Um, this one's deep. Um, for me, it's doing everything every day that I feel makes me a better person. Never in my entire adult life done any task that I haven't thought this is me. It doesn't really make sense, but just the thought of like going to work for a nine to five job for someone else to get money to then buy stuff or go traveling, that kind of thing just, I could never do that. I'm all about every day I'm working for myself, working on projects I'm really passionate about. Every day I'm spending time with my family. Every day I'm hanging out with Scarlett and Emma and it's all these sorts of things that I think a lot of people don't put so much emphasis on and they kind of, it's hard, it's tough because a lot of people have to work to get money and that's just the way the world works. This is the way the world works, yeah, something like that. Um, for me, my meaning of my life is just to create a life where it never feels like I'm working. I'm always busy, but I'm always busy with stuff that I choose to be busy with. No one's telling me what to be busy with, no one's telling me what to do. And as soon as you've got that sort of lifestyle, it's, it makes your life a lot better. So that's the meaning of my life. It might not work for your life. Favorite Casey Neistat vlog, in case you don't know, I definitely watch him. Um, I don't know, his style is so different that every video is completely different. I don't really have like one that stands out for me as being amazing. To be fair, I only discovered him maybe a year ago, so I haven't watched his first sort of six months of vlogs. I'm sort of slowly going back and watching the start to kind of catch up so I can see them. Just anything, I'm loving all the new drone stuff he's doing, it's great to see him incorporating drone stuff with his vlog. It's a great storytelling piece of equipment, so it's great that he's finally found a drone that he can actually use, and so I'm just loving all the drone stuff, especially in New York, it's just amazing. Fondest memory with my parents, uh, with my dad, it would have to be going to Vietnam. We went to Vietnam last year for 21 days and it was just the most amazing trip I've ever been on. So many awesome memories, so much awesome stuff. It was just an amazing trip. Favorite memories of my mother would probably have to be when we went back to England in 2012 with my wife. And it just so happened my mum was there as well. So we got to hang out with mum in England with all her family and I don't know, it was just different seeing mum in a different light with her whole different family over there. It was just nice hanging out with her um, for her birthday over there. And yeah, it was nice creating memories in a different place, but with the same people you're really familiar with. How do I always pull it the same face? I don't know, I get asked this all the time. I think it might be something to do with my slightly larger frame that when you kind of go, it gives you like a more defined chin. Maybe, maybe? I don't know. I, it's just something I've done and I've always done, I don't know. At what point in your life did you realize adult crocs were not for me? Um, I think if I tracked it back, it would be almost the exact same day that me and Emma started dating. Those two weren't related, they were. You're a very busy man, but seem to manage your time and balance priorities very well. What do you do to manage your time? I use a thing called Trello, which is amazing. It's behind you on the wall. I'll show you now. So it's just this giant board with all my to-do lists on it. So any upcoming jobs, the job inquiries come in here. This is my to-do list, my assistant's to-do list, weddings that we're working on, people I need to invoice, stuff we need to add to our website. And then finalizing is kind of where things just get dragged when we're finished with it. It's just a giant workflow tool. It's amazing. I've only been using that for about six months. Before that, I was using an Excel spreadsheet and it just got way too fiddly. It's the dumbest thing I've ever done. Um, 
the dumbest thing I've done that I can never let down was when I was probably like 14 or 15, my dad and one of his best friends and his son was over from England. We went to Wairiki Golf Resort in Taupo. If you know it, it's one of the most amazing golf courses in New Zealand. Had the New Zealand Open a couple of times. It's an amazing golf course. We were in the car park getting our stuff into the golf cart. I was sitting in the driver's seat. I thought I was putting my foot down on the brake. Turns out it was the accelerator and, it, and the steering wheel was turned over hard right. So I ended up, as soon as I touched the brake, I thought, oh, we're moving. I better slam my foot down on the brake. So then I slammed my foot down on the accelerator and I smashed into the back of dad's car and then the side of a brand new BMW that was next to the car. I can't actually remember how much damage it was. My dad never lived it down. He still doesn't live it down, but it was an expensive mistake. What does it take to grow a successful business and how do you deal with clients that you, and how do you deal with clients that want you to keep reducing your price? The biggest thing for me with reducing your price isn't actually doing stuff cheap. If there's a good reason to do it, like a charity or it's just something I really want to do, I'm, the price isn't really a concern. As long as I'm getting some money and it's worth my while to do it, money isn't really a problem. The biggest alarm bell that happens with someone asking for a cheaper price is for some reason, if they want a cheaper price, they're gonna be the most difficult customer ever. So as soon as someone starts talking with price or haggling with price or trying to get things cheaper, alarm bells start going off that this person's gonna be hard to deal with and they're gonna want more than they're getting and they're wanting it cheaper. I've always tried to think, well, this person might be different, but in nearly every single instance this has happened, that has been the case. How do you determine what you're worth as a videographer or photographer? Also, at what point did you decide this path was a sustainable both in the sense of expanding your business and supporting yourself and family? Um, pricing yourself is the hardest thing to do. It was about 12 months ago that I had this realization that I am very in demand and I'm turning down more work than I can actually do. And I literally just doubled my prices across every single front, all my prices doubled. My workflow, my workload didn't change at all, but obviously now I'm a lot better financially and it means I'm not so stressed with money, whereas before I was kind of making ends meet and I kind of worked out how much money I'd be happy with and that's what I was charging clients. But I've kind of had a realization that clients are prepared to pay a bit more if they're getting good quality and they're good experience and it's sort of more the going rate now. Um, but yeah, pricing yourself is one of the hardest things. I hate it when a client's like, hey, we want you to do this video project, this is what we want you to do, blah, blah, blah. And you're literally like, it could be anything from five grand to 20 grand. Like, it's hard to choose a number. Sometimes I'm just like, I'm happy with that. And it goes back to my previous question that if it's a job I really want to do, then I'm prepared to sort of make the price work for both parties because I really want to do it. And I think quite often clients can realize that from my passion that they know I'm passionate about it and they can see I really want to do it and that the money is kind of like a secondary thing. Next question, what's your favorite dinosaur and why it would have to be the Stegosaurus? I don't know why, I think when I was little I had this giant inflatable of a Stegosaurus and I love that thing. Um, I think it's just all its spikes, like he looks like a badass, even though he eats plants, he still looks like a badass. Done, question time. New toys. So I've just bought this new lens, 16 to 35 f4. Image stabilized lens. And I bought a Gorilla Pod thing as well so I can hold my camera a little bit easier. Hey, Bobo. Hi. Hi. What are you doing? So you approve on me buying a new lens? Is that what I'm reading between the lines? I feel like I am. Just. Hey Bo, you look like you got a real tough life. Hey, just hanging here by the fire. Bitch. And it's really to stay on the way for the lower self. I can see that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Do you want your bottle, Scarlett? No. No. Let's check out Australia now. You're going to get dizzy. Here. And the odd shout around for your set of fingers. Oh, silly better. Oh. Great for you. Oh. Great for you. Oh. Right, now I'm ending the vlog here. Bye.